it's only a matter of time until Eric Ten Hag gets sacked, and it's because of stats like these. We currently have only one win in the last seven Premier League games. We have conceded the most shots since the 2003-2004 season, and we are currently sitting in the seventh position. We will go eighth if West Ham win their game on the weekend, and we will go ninth if Chelsea win both of their games in hand. That's how bad this current season is. This is the same performance that we have seen every time a manager is about to be sacked. Before Ole got sacked, before Ragnik left, before Mourinho got sacked, the same dead, restless performance. These players have given up, and it will only get worse with time. The players are just not interested to play, and Ten Hag is making such awful decisions that he is not helping himself. We were outplayed in every single department: his shots, recoveries, position, you name it. That's simply unacceptable. No matter which team we play, whether home, whether away, we get dominated. No matter which team. Earlier in the day, I was laughing at uh, Mickey Van Der Ven, right? Because he was slipping all over the place. Van Der Slippy. But Kambawa Waller did the same thing, and that's an unfortunate thing. I like Kambawa Waller, right? He's a promising player. But this is gonna get memed. This will come up on his career every time he plays. And this goal happened because Garnacho gave the ball away way too easily. This goal happened within ten seconds of our own goal kick. We have no structure, no strategy. Like, how are you considering ten seconds from our own goal kick? And even after that, there were so many shots, so many shots that Burnham out could have scored. They could have again been three nil or four nil up before we got the equalizer. But thankfully, Bruno got the score level. I don't know how that goal happened, but it happened somehow. It was our only shot in that half, and Bruno scored from it. The second Burnmouth goal. How has he got in this much space near our own D? Like, what is going on with the team structure? Like, how is our opponent free that much near our own goal? Game after game, I don't think that Ten Hag is trying to change anything. What his plan is, I do do not know. To make things worse. I don't know what Ten Hag is doing. I don't know what's going on with him. For what reason did he decided to start Rashford? I don't know. He's been a one of the worst players this season, and he started to play him again. So he started Rashford. He didn't do anything. Yes, Gar Garnacho also had a bad half, right? But Garnacho has been playing much better this whole season. Ten Hag, for some reason, decided to sub off Garnacho for Amit. Yes, I know Amit should have come on. But Amar should have started the game instead of Rashford. Ten Hag made so many mistakes in this game, like even I can't defend him. Starting Rashford, subbing off Ganacho, and then making his sub only in the seventy fifth, yes, seventy seventh minute. And even that sub, he took off Menu. He didn't take off Casemiro. Ten Hag is not helping himself. He will get himself sub, and he has to blame himself for it. I can't understand how Rashford and Casemiro both survived the full 90 minutes. I just don't. Whether it's favoritism, whether he's afraid of taking them off, or he doesn't trust the bench. Like I don't know what's going on. But that's a massive mistake. I don't know how has Casemiro dropped off so much. He went from being one of the best midfielders in the league last season to this. Every single player is going past Casemiro very easily. I have seen Casemiro more in opponents D than our own. In addition to that. Dallo and Bissaka. Bissaka has only had one good game at left back when we won against Liverpool in the FA Cup. After that, every single one Bissaka performance at left back has been horrendous, and still Ten Hag is being stubborn and keeping left uh, Bissaka at left back. That is making the left side more dead than it already is. It's Bissaka is a liability at left back, and I don't even know why Ten Hag is not switching them around. Rashford is just doing the same thing game after game after game when he knows it doesn't work. The left back overlaps. Rashford cuts in, tries to shoot, gets blocked. Each game, same story, doesn't change. One of the only players who stepped up in this game is Bruno. Bruno has been performing bad in the last few months, but in this game he was the only player who looked like he cared about the result, about what is going to happen to the club if we don't perform. He scored a wonderful goal. He scored a good penalty, and he was the only player who was trying to do anything. Was it a penalty? I don't think so. It was very, very soft. But given how many decisions we have had against us, 
I will take this penalty. Even when we are playing only one game a week, the team looks lethargic. There's just not enough effort in the team. It's a mix of tactics and the players being bad. I don't think Ten Hag survives this season. If he loses one more game, it will be the most losses we have ever had in a season. And that is definitely going to get him sacked. We have a lot of difficult games. Arsenal, Brighton, Newcastle. Forget them, right? Even our next few games. I don't. I can't guarantee a win in any of them. I can see us getting dominated in each and every of these small games. Even against Coventry, I don't think we win that easily. That's how bad the situation is right now. I can see a new manager coming in. And I can only say that in the case of Ten Hag, it's a situation of the right guy at the wrong timing. He performed really well at Ajax. He performed really well in the first season. I don't know how we have gone from the last season of winning the Golden Glove, finishing third, to this season where we have considered the, one of the most shots in Europe. We are at negative two goal difference or negative one. We are sitting in seventh. Like This drop-off is just not only down to Ten Hag. There's multiple factors. But at the end of the day, Ten Hag will have to take the blame for the terrible decisions he's making. He had a chance to save his job, but he keeps making mistakes. And it's got him to the point where he will be getting sad. Now, coming on to the question of new managers. I do not want to see Southgate. If in your higher Southgate, I might not even watch the games anymore. I do not want Deserby. I think he's overhyped. I do not want Potter. The only two managers I want, which I've also stated before, is Nagelsmann, which is going to be difficult because he's with Germany for the Euros. So I don't think he can join until like August, which is already pretty late because he missed most of the transfer window. He will miss the pre-season tour. The other option is Hansi Flick. The problem with that is Barca is already rumored to be in talks with Hansi Flick to get him as a manager. So if Ineos wants Hansi Flick, they will have to move for him fast. Otherwise, we will miss out on Hans Flick and the only option left is Nagelsmann, which will be very, very difficult to do. Is there any chance of Ten Hag keeping his job? Only one chance. He has to not lose the rest of his games. Either draw or win. And he has to win the FA Cup. That's the only way possible I can see him keeping his job. Our next game is next week against Coventry. If we get dominated in that game, then that's just shame. Like, it's not even down to the manager. If our players get dominated by a championship team commentary in, in the FA Cup semi-final, then that's down to the players as well. Let's see what happens. If you have liked my video so far, then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below and be part of my growing community. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is going to be the future of Manchester United. If you want some happy memories, some source of happiness, then click on this video right here where I give our match reaction to the wonderful draw we got against Liverpool, how we crashed Klopp's farewell tour. I will see you all again next week after the match. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.